Miko Koivu is getting his jersey retired later this year. The first wild player to have such an honor. Is he worthy of those accolades? Plus, what are some of our favorite moments throughout Miko Koivu's wild career? We answer those questions and more today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we recap the news that Miko Koivu will have his jersey retired on March 13th against the Nashville Predators, becoming the first Minnesota Wild player to have his jersey retired by the team. We debate whether or not Koivu is worthy of this honor based on the numbers he put up throughout the course of his career. And we also take a look back at some of our favorite Miko Koivu moments from his wild tenure. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with over a decade's worth of experience covering all things Minnesota sports. And now here at the helm of Locked on Wild for my first full season after hopping on the show last year. Happy to have you along for a Tuesday edition of the show. And as we said, the big news for today's episode is that Miko Koivu is going to have his jersey retired at the XL Energy Center on March 13th against the Nashville Predators in a pregame ceremony, becoming the first Minnesota Wild player to ever have that honor bestowed. So obviously... A tremendous honor for the former Minnesota Wild captain, the first full-time Minnesota Wild captain. And so we'll uh, we'll talk about that news as well as um, an interesting tie-in, which makes this make so much sense for the Minnesota Wild to uh, have Koivu be the first player to have his jersey retired. Plus, uh, looking forward to uh, hearing from you as to your favorite Miko Koivu moments as well. We had a ton of listener participation for this, and so uh, we'll shout those out here throughout the rest of the show as well. Want to mention also, if in listening to this, you come up with another moment, make sure to leave a comment uh, in whatever form you are listening or watching uh, today's episode of Locked on Wild, and we'll make sure to get to those as well. So to the main course for today's show, Miko Koivu getting his jersey retired number nine will hang in the rafters of the XL Energy Center forever. And uh, for Koivu becoming the first Minnesota Wild player to have that honor. Uh, and um, really not, uh, not a difficult choice for the Minnesota Wild. I mean, you look at uh, Koivu's body of work. Uh, the leader for the franchise in games played, in goal, uh, in assists, in points, um, in just a ton of categories, and really was you know the perfect fit for captain for this team in the uh, early part of the franchise's tenure. Koivu come into the Wild in 2005, 2006, and uh, staying with the franchise up until the uh, pretty much the end of his career. Did have a cup of tea with Columbus in 2020, 2021, but uh, 20, 2005, 2006 to 2019, 2020, uh, really encompassing, you know, everything that you would want in a hockey player, a guy who uh, was just tenacious defensively, uh, was um, one of those leaders who wanted players to do as he did, uh, didn't necessarily speak the most, didn't have to as captain of this team and had a ton of clutch moments as well. One of the better defensive centers of his era uh, for this wild team. And so, you know, looking at the numbers, I mean, the fact that he is the wilds leader uh, in a lot of different categories makes him certainly worthy of having his Jersey retired. I have seen some people skeptical and suggest that maybe Koivu is not worthy of, uh, of this accolade, but, 
let's just look at it this way. I want to preface that I'm not throwing any shade at Miko Koivu at, at all. I mean, when you have players that uh, that play for a team as long as Koivu did, um, they're going to put up numbers. And the fact that he is the franchise leader in a lot of different categories, I think, carries weight and needs to be celebrated to the point that, uh, you know, have uh, have him back, have a ceremony to uh, to honor his retirement, and uh, the Wilds are, are going to retire his jersey as well. I, I don't think there's any better player to encapsulate what the Minnesota Wild were during that time than Miko Koivu, a defense-oriented player on a defense-oriented team that really wanted to pride itself and being super physical, super aggressive, and uh, and grinding wins out uh, throughout the course of that era. They had a lot of success, as did Miko Koivu, but it didn't necessarily translate in both cases. Uh, one of the biggest gripes, I think, um, for Koivu is that he wasn't necessarily a two-way player. He did um, He did chip in goals. Throughout uh, a lot of his tenure, I mean, his uh, career high in goals, 22, but, you know, he brought top level defense uh, throughout the course of his career, uh, just struggled sometimes to uh, to get the other end of that to uh, to really translate um, to his game. So honestly, for me, it just it makes perfect sense to try to encapsulate this first era of wild hockey in which this was a a very much a defense-oriented team. It makes sense if we are truly going to take that and compartmentalize it and move on from it, that we memorialize it somehow as a nod to the past, but move on to try some new things. Because watched Wild Hockey recently, this is not not exactly your, uh, your parents' wild squad. Uh, much more capable of scoring these days. Uh, still playing good defense, but uh, but much more carried by the offense than they have been in uh, in previous years. And so, you know, you, you just look at the parallels through Koivu's career. They line up perfectly with what the uh, the Minnesota Wild were attempting to do with him on the ice. And so, I don't think there is any player better to be the first one of this chapter of the Minnesota Wilds history to uh, to have his jersey retired. You can always look back on those uh, on those times and you know the Wilds did get to the playoffs quite a bit with uh, with Koivu on the team. They just never really took the next step. I mean, his first season they did not make the playoffs, then they went in back-to-back years, a little bit of a gap 2012-2013. They got into the first round, got to the second round the next two years. Then, um, obviously, 2016, 2017, the big one in which the Wild had uh, their most successful season ever, 106 points. Lost, though, in the first round of the NHL playoffs. And so this is always a team that was good enough to get in, but never good enough to take that next step uh, throughout the course of the Koivu tenure. So... He deserves to be remembered for what he brought to this team, how he conducted himself on the ice, uh, the fact that he just gutted it through injury after injury after injury after injury. But, you know, I like to think that this team has turned the page and is, is looking more to the other side of the coin, which is probably where the next player to have their jersey retired will come from. Um, Depending on uh, depending on how things play out, um, and so that you know that'll be interesting to see who ends up being next. But if we are looking for a player that really encapsulates what this team used to be, uh, it's Miko Koivu is the easy choice. And so if you look at it that way, as uh, as opposed to you know there are always these arguments when jerseys are retired of like. Oh well, if you if you retire too many players' jerseys, if you're like the Yankees, then you're not going to have any any jersey numbers for anybody to wear. Well, yeah, I I see part of that uh, at that argument, but at the same time, 
if you have players that were cornerstones and were, you know, a huge part of your team's success, they deserve to uh, to be remembered and to uh, to be cemented um, in the uh, the franchise's lore. And so, Koivu perfectly encapsulates that era. And so, yeah, hang his jersey in the rafters as a nod to the fact that uh, that's where the Wild were when they first came into the NHL, but that they have higher aspirations than that now um, that hopefully will lead to hoisting some banners as well. So a little bit on Koivu having his jersey retired. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some fan favorite moments throughout the Miko Koivu tenure with the Minnesota Wild. That is coming up next here on Locked on Wild. The holidays are around the corner and finding the perfect gift is tricky. Omaha Steaks makes it easy to send friends and family an unforgettable gift guaranteed to be loved. Folks, Omaha Steaks has become a staple Father's Day gift in the Topal household. My dad loves it. Me and my brother have gotten him a gift pack from Omaha Steaks multiple years in a row, and it is always a hit. So if you're looking for something to get for dad or for the griller in your life, Head to omahasteaks.com and enter NHL into the search bar to order the perfect gift package. For $99.99, you'll get 24 entrees like the world-famous bacon-wrapped filet mignons, chicken breasts, sides, desserts, and so much more. When you use the uh, code NHL, you'll also get an additional eight Omaha Steaks burgers free with your order. We've all heard the reports about shortages and shipping delays, so don't wait. Order the perfect package today at omahasteaks.com and you'll get eight free burgers when entering the code NHL. Achieve gifting greatness with Omaha Steaks. Incredible flavor, incredible value, 100% guaranteed. omahasteaks.com, keyword NHL. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, and once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. Turning our attention to some fan favorite moments throughout the Amico Koivu tenure. And a big thank you to everybody who supplied moments uh, through this out on Twitter and uh, just trying to get you know a wide range of Koivu moments that we could shout out on the show. And so uh, we will go to, I think, the most popular answer. And um, this coming first from Justin Baki of the Sound the Foghorn podcast, uh, the Miko Koivu 1000th NHL game in which uh, he went to the patented backhand in the shootout and I was able to come away with the winning goal. Uh, and, you know, Justin also notes in here, which I think is the coolest thing ever, that he named his oldest son Miko. So perfect tie in there, perfect way to start it. Thank you for the submission, Justin. And uh, yeah, that is certainly going to uh, to live in Koivu lore forever. Uh, just in an, a crazy moment uh, that Koivu was able to supply. Uh, that was uh, mentioned a few other times as well. Uh, I think um, Alex McLeddy, uh pointed to that one as well. We had uh, replies in a couple of different places. So just trying to make sure we don't miss any um, here as we go through. Uh, we also have uh, from Tim Freitag at Kerry Taco on Twitter. The best was when he got the game-winning goal against Vancouver after he came back from his broken leg. The slash from Oland that broke Koivu's leg was vicious, and he only got four games for it. Uh, yes, uh, game-winning goals aplenty. Uh, Koivu had uh, some really good ones throughout the course of his career, and uh, that is certainly a, uh, a very good one. Uh, to uh, to start our list off with as well. Uh, found the Micheletti tweet. He mentions uh, Miko getting the shootout winner against Dallas in his 1,000th career NHL game with his family in attendance. Perfect icing on the cake for that uh, that Koivu shootout moment. And so um, those uh, are some great submissions. Just continuing to scan through what we have um, here um, Steven Strom, friend of the show, mentioning the uh, the Stars OT winner in the playoffs. Playoff moments, uh, certainly, we'll take as many as we can get. 
uh, here with the Wild. So uh, any sort of playoff success is uh, is a great one as well. Um, Justin Seam, and again, hopefully pronouncing these last names right. Apologies if not, but uh, at T Wolves Baby on Twitter. Uh, his first wild game, Justin's, that is. It was against the Stars, and all I wanted was a Gabrick breakaway and a Miko shootout backhand. Got both, and Miko was the game winner. So uh, adding to that same uh, game against the uh, the Dallas Stars, that uh, that has been a popular one, probably the most popular answer that we have received um, here in uh, in this question uh also dan bradley at hockey vox db anytime he went backhand bar down in the shootout the patented move uh from the captain and so you know some great answers thank you for those that participated um we did have uh, some others as well and you know i um there there are certainly as i alluded to in the open there there were some things, some negativity um, towards Koivu's career that I think is because when he came to Minnesota, he was cast as that top-line center, that, that number one go-to guy, and probably was not the best fit for him. I mean, being more of a defense-oriented center uh, that can score as opposed to, you know, a true two-way center. So... Yes, I, I can see where, you know, there were high expectations put on him that he wasn't necessarily able to live up to. But uh, at the end of the day, that's that's more of uh, that's more of the wild putting him in that situation than anything else. And so, yeah, it's it's unfortunate that uh, that he wasn't able to get the wild to the uh, the ultimate goal that every team has every single year. But at the end of the day guy put up some good numbers he played incredible defense and uh, obviously was a great player in and of his own right just maybe not in the right uh, best fit for him in the lineup but uh, that speaks to an issue that the wild have had uh, basically throughout their entire existence is uh, just not really having a true bevy of centers uh, year in year out it seems to be an issue so if anything, that is probably the biggest uh, biggest thing that weighed against Koivu throughout his career was that he just was not like that true number one guy. So I, that is that is something that was brought up as well in a couple of responses. And so, you know, I hear that. I see it. I wanted to make sure I acknowledge it so that people don't think I'm just, you know, cherry picking all the good ones uh, here for uh, for this exercise. So some great moments from the uh, the Koivu tenure a great tenure with the Minnesota Wild, but as mentioned, ultimately one that didn't result in a Stanley Cup or you know any sort of huge playoff success, a lot of ones and dones. Um, but hopefully the Wild are starting to turn a corner in that regard, but uh, obviously could not have gotten to this point without, uh, without those years uh, of getting things started in the NHL. We will finish today's episode of Lockdown Wild taking a look at which players on the roster currently might find their numbers hanging in the rafters someday. That is next here on Lockdown Wild. BetOnline.ag has you covered for all season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues its march to the playoffs. BetOnline.ag remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. So head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code locked on to receive that welcome bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. And again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen every day. We've got new episodes coming out every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Who else currently on the Minnesota Wild roster could find their jerseys hanging in the rafters? Uh, once their career is all said and done, I mean, you got to look at uh, at this point the captain now, Jared Spurgeon, who finds himself eighth 
amongst Minnesota Wild players in points and uh, is widely regarded as one of the best defensemen in the NHL. I think Spurgeon's got a good shot to uh, to have his jersey hung up someday. Um, obviously, his numbers could increase. His numbers could tail off, but if the Wild are able to, you know, Whoever has a big hand in the first Stanley Cup that this team wins, I think is going to get some serious consideration as well. Just because of the fact that that would, you know, we're all we're all on this clock. The Vikings, the Twins, the Timberwolves, and the Wild, as to who's going to be the next team to win a championship. Whoever that is, is going to basically be adored by the state of Minnesota for the rest of eternity. If it's the wild that do it first, whoever has the biggest hand in that, I think is going to be immortalized in some way. And is that fair or not? Is that something we should do? I'm just telling you with as long as it's been 1991, since a Minnesota team of the core four won a championship, but as long as it's been, it's going to be immortalized somehow. I'm just telling you that right now. It's going to be immortalized somehow once it happens. And so if, let's say, for instance, within the next three or four years, if Marcus Foligno, you know, has a hat trick in game six or game seven of the Stanley Cup final, he's going to get immortalized for that somehow because that was the performance that finally got the Wild over the top to win a championship. So maybe he ends up being a guy that could have that uh, that honor bestowed as well. Honestly, I think the probably three likeliest players on the Wild currently are Jared Spurgeon. I would say then Kirill Kaprizov and probably then Jonas Brodeen. But uh, I think Spurgeon and Kaprizov are the two that have the really the best odds. Uh, obviously, that's looking a lot into the future uh, in the Kirill Kaprizov department. But uh, with Spurgeon, as mentioned, already in the top 10 in Minnesota Wild history in terms of points. And so uh, a couple more really good seasons from him should climb the ladder uh, very well. It's going to be fascinating because of how long they played here and the numbers that they put up. What happens with Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter? Do they have the same honor bestowed as Miko Koivu, or do they simply get thanked for their years of service? That is going to be really interesting to see how that plays out, because honestly, I have no idea. It could go either way. So all of the current roster, I think it's Jared Spurgeon or Kirill Kaprizov, probably with the best odds to have their jerseys retired as well. That's going to bring us to the end of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Don't forget the Wild to play the Arizona Coyotes at home tonight. I will be in attendance, so if you're there, make sure to uh, to say hi. Um, let me know if you like the show. If not, uh, we, we can talk about that. Um, but looking forward to my first game in season here this year. Also, now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure that you're heading over to the Locked on Bets podcast. Fantasy football and fantasy sports are getting into the meat and potatoes of their seasons. So make sure that you are getting your one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, host, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. Locked on Bets is free and available on all platforms. Make sure to follow along with Locked on Wild, also available wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. If you search Locked on Wild, you will find everything you need. And make sure to keep up with us because we are trying to keep you as up to date on Minnesota Wild's coverage as possible. If a puck drops in the state of hockey, Lockdown Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.